Our smelt is complete. It was a success, if not a huge success. I think we ended up with probably 10 to 14 pounds of bloom, so somewhere slightly less than 20% of the iron ore that we started with ended up as bloom. And even that is full of impurities. And as we work it out, it's going to get lighter. So what we end up with for usable wrought iron, we have yet to discover. And that's going to be the next part of the process. This is the biggest single chunk. It's just slightly over three pounds. And because I have never refined a bloomery iron piece into wrought iron, I'm not going to start with that. I have a bunch of smaller pieces of bloom that weigh about two pounds total. And I'm going to start by trying to refine this stuff. And we're going to use the coal forge. I would use charcoal just to continue with the regional sources of charcoal, but we burned all the charcoal that we made, and I don't have any extra to do this part of the process. So I'm just going to go ahead and use coal. I don't feel like that really cheats the system because the project was the bloomery furnace. This is now a whole new thing and not really part of that original project. It's to see what we can do with this iron. So we're going to get a coal fire going here. Most gas forges barely get up hot enough to weld mild steel, especially at our altitude. We're at 6,500 feet. So I'm not even going to try and weld wrought iron in the gas forge. We're going to do it in the coal forge. I know this will get hot enough. I've done it before. Refining wrought iron is very much a forge welding process. It's like making modern pattern welded steel. The bloom has to be worked very slowly and gently to squeeze out as many of the impurities as possible. And once it starts to consolidate, we're going to have to start to draw it out into some sort of a bar. Those bars then have to get re-welded together to re refine it. So it gets fluxed, folded, fluxed, welded, folded, fluxed, welded multiple times. It's a lot like making modern pattern welded steel. There's not a lot for me to go on because I've never done it and there's not a lot of information in books. So we're just going to start with one little bloom here and see what I can do with that. One problem is these look a whole lot like clinker. They're more dense and they're heavier than the clinker that I usually get out of this coal. But it might be easy to lose these in the fire and the smaller pieces would be very easy to lose in the fire. So we're going to hope that we don't do that. We're going to take our time. We're going to go slow. We may not get it all on this video, or may not get it all done today. I may have to pick this up again later. The camera's been running a lot of the day, the lights have been used, and I don't have anything plugged in and didn't bring a battery charger to the shop. So if things quit, that may just be the end of the video and we may pick it up again the next day. So, if things get weird, that's what happens. So I'm just going to bring this bit of bloom up to what looks like a welding heat and see what we end up with. During the smelt, we just relied on the silica sand that was in with the black sand as a flux. And that's what makes up a lot of this scale and glassy substance. But I don't have a source of good clean silica sand right here around the shop. So I'm going to use borax. And borax was a very common flux historically. So if you're doing historical recreation, this may be appropriate. But again, this isn't necessarily about historical context. It's about whether or not we can actually create usable wrought iron from materials found locally. And to be honest, we know that it's possible because there's a steel mill not far from here, and that steel mill is there because of its the availability of local ore, coal, water, and rail transport. So they had everything they needed to have a good steel mill. Here is our first little heat, nice and soft and squishy. I wish I knew exactly what to expect. I think we'll get that hot again. I'm also not 100% sure what breaks off is slag 
from what is still good iron at this point. The little bits of it are burning so we don't want to get it too hot. Last thing I want to do is make this all burn up in the fire. Camera on? Yeah. But I think at this time I'm going to go ahead and flux it. And we may have to try and get it a little bit warmer because I think it's time to start trying to weld that into a lump. This stuff just wants to mush. And I can't really tell if that's iron or not. This little piece feels like iron. Sounds like iron. That sort of sounds like iron. But boy, it's it is super fragile. I don't know if you can get it to a welding heat. It just wants to fall apart. But I don't know how you make it consolidate it less than a welding heat. Well, this is a very much an experiment. I guess I'm going to start with another piece and see if we can get two or three similar sized chunks. those of you watching, I don't know that I would use my efforts here as a how-to guide because I'm making this up as we go along. One problem I'm noticing here is that it's real easy to burn the little rough spots off in the fire before you get to a point that you can start working the bar. So trying to get those rough spots work back in. It's actually looking pretty good right there. I'm hearing a ting on that. Yeah. It's uh that that pink tank. You guys bored watching me do this yet? It's not as bad as watching somebody file, but it's probably close. That's feeling pretty darn solid. I'm, I'm highly impressed with this little hunk. I'm actually hammering on that pretty hard and it's staying together. So that's almost vaguely unrefined wrought iron. I kind of feel this stuff squish funny, so I lighten up my hammer blows. Yep, that ends wants to break off. Yep, there it went. That's too bad. There's a bunch of the slag coming off of that, so that's the glassy stuff squirting out. Now you can actually see the rough texture of the bar. But that's starting to feel pretty solid. Bet I won't push my luck. If I can pull this off without uh, breaking this or not. 
That's way more solid than I was going to give it credit for. iron. Yep. My hope then is that I can bend this in half right at the chisel cut without breaking it. I didn't get it. I did not get lucky. So now we're really going to have to struggle here. This is where balance comes in. I'm going to hope I don't lose that in the fire. Very gentle, so I don't lose that extra piece on top there. And we can go a little bit heavier. And we're going to lose a little bit more of it there. Are you still hot enough that you can, you can put that right on that top and pound it? I don't think so. Yeah, at some point I'm going to have to figure out how to get all of these little chunks into a single piece. Impetus for a ribbon burner. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure the when you're doing punnage, the, uh, the physics are a lot different. Well, I'm able to hit this pretty hard now, so it's really consolidated well from what it was to start with. And I think instead of messing with this one too much longer, I'm going to start another piece until I create a whole lot of little pieces about like this. And then we'll bring them all together into one piece. Some of this is just going to fall off and have to be dealt with another way that I haven't figured out yet. Well, I lost a lot of that one. A lot of that is probably glass. I think it is. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can hear Jake on the microphone or not, but. He's thinking that a lot of that is just glass from the slag. Oh. You should clean your anvil off before you come out of the fire. Looks like I'm doomed to work this in one ounce increments. Luckily, most of the pieces that broke off of that we were able to salvage. So I'll set that one aside, and hopefully we end up with something about that size to weld to that. I've got that first bar we did, and I've done a second bar, so now we're welding these together. And they're stuck well enough that I can put them back in the fire now. And take a more serious welding heat. Those two bars weren't attached when I brought them out that we're getting there. We skipped ahead about an hour from the first bar till we got to this second bar. So we skipped a lot of boring tappity tappity. By the way, tappity tappity is a technical term. Industry standard. In, yeah, industry standard. Yeah. Another welding heat. This is really turning into a 
homogeneous material now that is clearly going to be usable for something. What? I don't know. We'll see how much we actually get. My hope is that I can make a little axe out of this. But to do that, I also have to make steel. I was afraid that end was going to break off. But we still doubled the size of the original bar. It's the same length, more or less, but it's thicker. I don't think that's perfectly welded. It seems to me it's shearing past itself a little bit. But for those of you watching at home, this is certainly working. We are going to end up with something there. That's enough wrought iron to make some form of a tool, a chisel or something of that sort. It's not enough to be an axe yet. Now what we have here is a real billet of usable wrought iron. This came out really nice compared to what we started with. And that will continue to get more pieces added on to it. I don't know if we'll do that all today. This may take several days to get all this refined. And it doesn't all need to be in one billet, depending on what it's going to be in the long run. Well, the battery on the camera is getting ready to die. This is all of the wrought iron that we have produced so far, which seems like a lot of work, and it is. I certainly wouldn't start producing my everyday stock out of wrought iron made this way, but I can see why historically things made out of wrought iron were very thin. They made the absolute maximum use of the material and did not waste any of it, and didn't use material they didn't need. But if you think this looks pitiful, remember what we started with was dirt. That's black sand with iron in it, harvested right out of the ground about nine days ago. And today it is a piece of wrought iron. And that is all thanks to Mr. Jake Radcliffe, who ought to come on this side of the camera. Just in case I don't finish this video before he takes off in a day or two. So, thank you for okay. having me. Thank you very much. I am glad you came. It was an absolute pleasure being here. Wonderful. So we'll pick this up, and we will make more wrought iron, and then we're going to make something out of it. But I don't know what yet. Well, at this point, we say aloha to Jake, or happy trails, depending on if we're talking about his part of the country or my part of the country. But in any case, he has started his journey homeward. He's going to tourist around Colorado for a about a day and a half on his way back towards the airport in Denver and start home sometime tomorrow. So we're on our own now. We gotta we gotta figure this out. No more adult supervision from Jake. Our little bar of wrought iron we made yesterday weighs a whopping seven ounces. I figure we used about twenty ounces of ore. I weighed it and then weighed the ore that was or not the ore, the bloom, twenty ounces of bloom. I weighed what we had and weighed what was left after we made this little bar. I, this is about 20 ounces worth of bloom to make this 7 ounce bar. So that's about one third. But it wasn't the best part of the bloom. It was some really kind of junky, nasty stuff that I thought I'd start with. And I'm getting results. Is it cost effective? Well, absolutely not. Unless you need iron and this is the only way you're going to get it. This is an absolute waste of time and money from a cost perspective, but it's been a load of fun, highly educational. It helps us understand and preserve the technology that people used before us, even though this isn't specific to a point in history and we're using an electric blower and an electric blower on the forge and all that kind of stuff. The iron is still the same. This is still the same 
type of wrought iron that would have been produced on a small scale in remote areas. So it's a very valuable lesson and it's worth every penny and every minute that's gone into it for that reason. So today I'm just working on refining a little bit more of this. I'm going to try and finish that uh, two pounds of bloom that I started with yesterday and try and get all of it into a little bit more usable iron. It's getting really difficult though because these are such small pieces. This is kind of what we're starting with. It's a very glassy, scaly, slaggy looking hunk. There's some amount of iron in there. I don't know how much, but a lot of it is waste. It's just going to be scale that falls, you know, get the magnet sticks there, but in a little there, but not in here. So there's a lot of that that's just junk that's going to go away. This piece weighs more than this piece, so it's going to have more iron in it. And that magnet sticks just about everywhere. So that's going to be a much better piece of bloom. And these are just the little bloomy bits. I've decided bloomy bits is a technical term and we should go with it. But as I refine these, I start working into little tiny bars like this. And this bar represents two or three chunks this size. And some of that breaks off, and some of these are pieces that broke off that I'm going to try and work back in. And some of what breaks off are such little chunks I haven't figured out if I can do anything. But these are all still magnetic, they are all still iron, and I'm going to try and figure out a way to spread this into a little shallow spoon shape, put these on there, and work them back in, and hopefully refine it over and over enough that that doesn't create a weak point because of the odd shape that these are. Now is that really a good way to spend your time? Probably not. I suspect that people that do this a lot and certainly our ancestors would have thrown all this junk out. It's just not worth their time. But because this may be the only time I ever do this, I hope not, I'd like to do it again and I would like to do it with Jake again if I can uh, hook up with him in one of his other smelts. But if we can save all the, almost all of this, I think I'm going to have enough bloom to make two tools of some sort out of. So we're going to do the best we can to salvage as much of this as we can. And then, with any luck, we'll be ready to go on to this piece. This weighs over three pounds. It is extremely dense and heavy. And pretty much anywhere you stick that magnet, it wants to stick. This is the the real prize. It was the best chunk of bloom that we got out of that. And I'm really honored that Jake chose to leave that with me to refine and make something out of. Because after all, this is what he was after. This is the point of the project. But he has the data. And he's happy with the data. He's happy with knowing how things worked. So I'm going to refine this. I'm going to try and make at least one good tool out of this. But I want to get my experience on this junky stuff first, and then I'm hoping this turns into a real pleasure to work. Now it's taking me, oh, 10 or 20 heats per little chunk to even come close to getting something that looks like wrought iron. And that creates a lot of clinker, so I'm cleaning the fire out quite frequently. It's a very tedious process. This isn't something you just go out to the forge for an hour and call it good. Although an hour a day for a week you might do okay. But I think by the time I get up this, that first two pounds of bloom, not that big three pound chunk, but the first two pounds, I'm going to have six or eight hours into it. So you're not going to see all that on video. So we got the fire built back up. And it's time for me to put a little piece of bloom in here. So it's time to put a little piece of bloom. And that's just a few ounces worth. And sadly, it looks a lot like the clinker I just pulled out of there. So it's easy to confuse. As it starts to get refined, it starts to look like little pieces of coke. And when it gets further refined, it starts to look like little pieces of coal because it's starting to get a little angular. So you really have to be careful and keep track of where you put this stuff in the fire. 
I can't bury it because I'll lose it, so it has to just kind of sit on top. The other thing I have discovered is that I can't work this at welding heat initially. It just burns up all the little lumps and bumps. They all go away. They fall apart. And we end up with nothing we can work with. So I need to kind of consolidate it and work it down even though it's not welding at this heat. I need to try and get it into a shape that I can weld and get all the iron components close to each other and work out some of that slag and some of that scale and some of the junk before I go to a welding heat. Now this is probably going to break off but I'm going to try and bend it over and get it to stick back on here otherwise I end up with two little tiny pieces again. In this state this stuff really doesn't bend very well so the odds of breaking that off are quite high. It looks like I might have gotten away with it. You just want to kind of squeeze all the air out of it. And now that's a solid enough piece I think I can bring that up to welding heat. So I'll flux it and weld it and I'll turn it around flux and weld this other end that is so ugly. And it's just a slow, slow process. And really gentle because it wants to fall apart. that down together now a little sausage or whatever you want to call it so that's a, a thing that's going to start taking shape a little bit easier I think we weld it or flux it again and weld it again some of what sticks to the outside of this when I come out of the fire is actually little pieces of coke that get stuck in the flux. And some of this isn't welding, it's just trying to pack the fibers together to give them a more likelihood of welding in the next heat. But as it sticks and welds, I can start actually forging this a little bit. I want to make it a fairly thin piece because that'll be easier to put back onto my other little chunk I'm working with. So that's a, an ugly little thing, but it's actually starting to behave like wrought iron. Got some more that iron bits there I can put back on somewhere. So now the idea is to add it to this. So I'm just going to set that on there. Ooh, that's almost the same size and shape. Who would have guessed? I'm going to bring this up to heat, put a little flux on it, set that on it and then very very gently set them in the fire and hope that they stay together. Put just a little bit of flux on this piece. I'm only going to worry about that end because I'm not going to be able to forge the whole thing or weld the whole thing anyways in the first heat. I'm going to set that right on top and we're going to bring that back up to temperature. As that starts to get close at the far end, I'm going to squeeze both pieces together with a pair of tongs in hopes to get a little bit of a tack weld. And then hopefully they won't slip apart when I bring them out of the fire. So those are ready to weld. If I can get them out of there. This is a place I might need my hot mill gloves. And at this stage, I really am no longer working 
with the little bloom, I'm really working with a little piece of wrought iron. It needs a little more refinement. It's not a perfect weld, but those aren't going to fall apart in the fire now, so I can safely hold it and move it and do what I need to do with it. A whole lot less junk comes out of this each heat. But it doesn't take long for it to cool off below welding heat so it's back in the fire again. Now the reason for this shape is this is what I'm going to make a little spoon out of that I hope I can put all those little bits into. So I'm going to widen this out and make a depression and see what happens if I fill it up with little bits of junk. But I'll probably end up welding a few more things to it before then. So I'm going to keep working on that. It doesn't really look any different. It's just as tedious as it looks and I'm sure it's more tedious to watch than it is to do. So that's going to go back in the fire and I'm going to keep working and when I get to the point of putting all these little chunks in there like this little BB that formed I'm not sure, oh, nope, that's just junk. That's interesting. Anyways, we'll see what we get. Uh, not as far as I can with the little bloomy bits because there's nothing big enough to find in the forge again. So now I'm welding these little chunks onto that earlier spoon shape that I talked about. And I'll take a couple of welding heats at that and then I'll reshape it into a spoon and I'll add more chunks. This one enough of a hollow to keep the, the other bits from falling off. See some of that fell off. That might just be scale, but I'll check it with a magnet to see if it goes back on again. And I'll put another piece on there. And I'm letting this sit in the fire with the blower off so that this chunk will come up to heat without risking burning the, the little spoon that I'm using. That was mostly junk. I can tell by the way it behaves under the hammer. But we'll refine the iron out of it anyways. Create another hollow. There's a piece that was partially refined earlier, so it should behave a little better. What I'm doing is welding the bits of bloom to the wrought iron spoon. So I've just got a handle and I've got a place to put them. And we're going to start refining some of the scale out of this. And try to improve our little bit of wrought iron here. But you can see that's getting more solid and it's thicker than it was before. You can go to a bigger hammer at this point. The other thing I'm going to do is see if I can bend this and weld it back to itself. And just this end is all I want to do at this point. Right where I'm adding all the junk. I don't want to cut it in half. I just want to create a place for it to bend. This might break off doing this. It's hard to say. I think I got away with it. So I'm going to flex that and weld that.
It feels like a good weld. Sort of knock the corners back a little bit, but keep from having sharp corners that are more likely to burn off. I'll take another good welding heat and I'll go ahead and make another spoon out of this. And we'll just keep going the way we have been. I probably have several more hours before I get this little tiny bit of bloom all worked down into this, and then we'll see what we have. Well, that got to the point that it finally felt every bit as ridiculous as I already knew it was to try and weld all those little bits into a bar. And I ended up taking a little handful of the smallest bits and I put them back in the bucket with the black sands and if I ever do another smelt they'll go back in the smelter, they won't be lost and hopefully they'll adhere to a bigger bloom the second time around and we'll get something usable out of them. But I made this little bar today. It's not as big as the one we did yesterday, which was the earlier part of this video, so you'll see it all in one day. But this is 5 eighths by about half and about three inches long. And it weighs exactly four ounces. Now we started with a little over two pounds of bloom. That's with something like 30 Three, or excuse me, two pounds, 1.4 ounces or something like that. So 33 ounces. And I now have 11.1 .1 ounces of wrought iron. So we're pretty much exactly one third, one to three, on wrought iron production based on the bloom. But those were the nastiest, scaliest, slaggiest, junkiest bits of bloom that we had compared to this. Now Jake actually took home even smaller bits of bloom but a lot of those were more like little iron BBs and they should actually have more iron per little bit than a lot of this stuff I was messing with today. I, I hope so. I hope Jake gets something out of that when he tries to refine that. But he's going to do it a little bit differently I think and I'll be interested to hear how he does that. So this thing is way more solid, way better. I think we'll get at least half of this into usable iron, if not two-thirds into usable iron, but we'll wait and find out. Remember, wrought iron is not steel. This is not hardenable. It's even less hardenable than mild steel, which is not hardenable. So to make this into a tool, we will need some steel. So one of our future projects will be to turn some of this into some kind of very simple steel, uh, blister steel or shear steel, and we will talk more about that when we get around to that project. I don't know if you can see this, but there's a lot of little stress cracks in this, things that aren't really sealed up very well. This is just welded into a, an iron bar. It's the absolute minimum that I could do to call this wrought iron. It is not refined wrought iron. There's probably no worse wrought iron on the face of the planet than what I've done with these two bars. To make that into a better material, it needs to be stretched out or drawn out into a longer bar, folded back on itself, and welded again, time and time again. I'm not sure how many times that should be done, but at least two or three to make refined wrought iron. And that will be a much better material. It'll work out all these little things. It'll allow all that to weld in, and it'll be much better. But if we get out of this chunk two pounds of usable iron, that's enough for two small tools, like a small hammer and a small axe perhaps, which is kind of what I'm thinking of at the moment. But both of those need steel. And this would be enough steel to make the faces for a hammer, the face and the peen, and this would turn into enough steel to make the cutting edge for an axe. So we have enough material here, I think, to do some really cool stuff with. But in the interest of not boring anybody too awfully much with the same topic day in and day out, we've done three days on building a furnace, doing the smelt, and refining bloomery iron into wrought iron. And we're going to leave it at that for a little while. We will get back to this big chunk of bloom. We will refine it. We'll do a video as we do that. Right now I'm kind of leaning towards at least an axe, and if there's enough, maybe a small hammer. But we'll see. But anyways, we're going to get back to our window grill project so that we can see how our spring 
die works and then get this shipped off to the new owner after the giveaway somebody won this and that name is in the comment section in the giveaway video if you're interested in seeing who the winner is but again for Jake thank you so very much for coming to visit thank you for showing me this wonderful skill and the little view of how people once created iron this explains why iron and steel were so valuable to our ancestors you don't find great big tools like we use today or the giant hinges that we like to use today back in the early days of the Iron Age things were really quite small because it took this much work to take dirt and make an iron bloom and then turn that into wrought iron and then it takes more work to turn wrought iron into steel so only little bits of steel were used on a wrought iron bodied tool and we're going to look at that when we make some tools out of this but the stuff was incredibly valuable and they just didn't waste it we have the luxury today that materials are really quite cheap quite readily available and we can make some really big impressive things but for our ancestors they wouldn't have wasted it like that they wouldn't have used it that way so we live in really a very luxurious time to be a blacksmith because we get to do whatever we want we can use minimal amounts if we want to we can make our own wrought iron and our own steel if we want to or we can make big massive impressive things if we want to because we have a, all of that material available to us so I'll quit lecturing I really do hope you like the video hope you can give it a thumbs up I'd love it if you would hit that subscribe button go back and watch the video on making the bloomery furnace doing the smelt this will all make more sense if you haven't seen those videos if you go back and do that watch some of the other videos there are some way better videos on smelting than the one I did that was just kind of turn the camera on and see what we caught type of a video so look at YouTube find other stuff on smelting I'll try to create a playlist of some stuff I think is worthwhile then as always get out to your shop make something but do stay safe and wear your safety glasses we'll see you for the next one thanks